I didn't. I didn't. So you called yourself a goddess of love. So did you, you felt, I mean, this was just like your generous spirit coming out. Yeah, it was, it was, um, yeah, because most people wouldn't fuck or, or you know. It's the like, unattractive mouse. That's yeah, so nice of uh, you. Well, it's kind of an English thing. Like you, oh. you no, well, you learn. It, oh, it's, it's, it's manners. To, manners. Polite. Good manners. Yeah, talking to polite. people who are being ignored. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Good swinger manners. Yes, yeah. good swinger <laughs> manners. You go and you have sex with the <laughs> ugliest people in the room so they don't feel left out. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> to be fair, that's probably one of the kindest things that you can do. Indeed. <laughs> It was pretty good. Oh, mom, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so I, I quickly just pulled this one out okay. because uh, I, rem I remember oh, reading. Not that. Oh, not that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can't do that quickly. Oh, come on. There's a lot of zippers in my pants. Um, uh, you get to tug it. It's all the yeah, way I down there. Exactly. Oh, just, uh, oh, yeah. Like, Let's have a good laugh. Thanks. <laughs> Why do I feel like that ugly guy in the orgy room? Maybe uh, you just need blue chew. I know. <laughs> Um, I remember reading this little part and loving the fact that uh, I think anyone who's, I think, in a more mainstream world, and I know this is a kind of a broad generalization, but my experience is I just shoot fine art nude. I don't actually do any, anything in the adult industry, obviously not that I would care one way or the other, but I think that there is this sort of strange understanding that if you're in the adult industry and you are... Uh, you, you work in that realm, that you're just a nymphomaniac all the time. Mm. And the reality is yes. like, it's it's a job for a lot of people. It's mm -hmm. something that they're good at. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean that you wanna fuck everybody all the time. No, in fact, um, that in the nude industry, they're much politer to the models than in the fashion agencies. Yeah, that, not surprised. Oh. Um, but I love that in, in this thing, your, uh, your mom is basically scandalizing the like unscandalizable for mm. lack of a better term. Okay. Oh, what did I do? I don't know. I guess we're going to oh, find, find out. out. Um, okay, we're about to get going, yelled Josh Blake, one of Playboy's two associate art directors. Let's get the arrangement right. Towels were dropped and naked bodies piled on top of each other until those at the bottom were howling that the wind was being squashed out of them. Eventually, we were all arranged to Josh's artistic satisfaction and the strobe began to pop. I've been to a couple in my time, but this is in no way like an orgy, I confided to James. We look like the leftovers of a mass murder. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. With an effort, I heaved myself out of the wriggling heap and buried my head in James's crotch. That's great, yelled Ed. Looks very realistic. Suze, just lift your left knee a little higher. What do you mean, looks realistic, gasped James as I put my lips around his flaccid prick. <laughs> yeah, she's giving him a blowjob, someone called excitedly. All heads turned to me in utter amazement. A girl sucking off a guy during a Playboy pictorial. W is this is true? Oh, I'm sure it was, yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why such an outrage was completely unheard of. Softcore sex was one thing, but hardcore shudder. Okay, calm down, everybody, Ed commanded to kill the nervous giggles. Let's wrap this up and go home. But we don't want to go home, cracked some sniggering smartass. Once they'd gotten over the shock of breaking the sex barrier, the kids began to enjoy themselves, although some of the girls looked worried about what they'd let themselves in for. Since I wasn't getting much of a rise out of James, I slithered over to the side of the platform where Andy was lying. Going to get into my friends tonight, I winked at him, snuggling down into the 69 position. Wow, was all he had time to say as I proceeded to treat his cock like a lolly, which, unlike a lolly, got warmer and bigger every time I licked it. <laughs> oh, Dad. I mean, it's funny because I read this, and I know this is like a story about my mom, but like this is my dad's voice. like, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and also, like, I just want to point out the fact that, you know, it was very important for me to to put this memoir back out, you know, through this Kickstarter campaign that we're doing um, in the memory of my father who passed away in January because it was really important to him to put this back out. And it's actually been kind of like a really bittersweet thing for me to see how well it's done. And like the fact that he's not here oh, no. to like, like he would be... I know I just read a passage about my mom giving a guy a blowjob, but I'm gonna cry right now. Um, he would be like so, I mean, I can't tell you over the, how over the moon he would be, 
you know, like this would. He is over the moon. Yeah, I mean, this would this would mean a lot to him. So, and as like strange as I recognize that it might seem that I'm getting like emotional about a book that my dad wrote about my mother having sex with other people. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this is all, you know, to me, like, in this book, I was just, I see, like, a lot of my dad's, like, love and admiration for my mom. And sex was one thing, but their bond was something that could not be broken. And it was born out of, like, respect and mutual admiration, like, a really deep-seated love. And he was so kind. We miss you a lot, Dad. <laughs>